What is up? It's your boy, Appendixless. In my lifetime, I've been into a lot of different martial arts schools and I've punched and kicked things in many different formats, whether it be like inside a karate dojo, taekwondo dojo, uh, muay thai gym, boxing gym. And within each of those different like schools of kick punchery, uh, there are different things that you kick and punch. So today it's exactly what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the different types of punching bags that you find in different schools, the different purposes, whether or not you should buy them for yourself, for your gym, uh, the kind of like the overall feel of them. I've used pretty much all of them that are on this list, with the exception of one or two. There's going to be some stuff on this list that I think is awesome and that I actually recommend. There's going to be some stuff on this list that I think is kind of a dud and maybe wouldn't buy, but regardless, you can find all of the affiliate links down below if you want to look at them yourselves. Let's start off with... Well, first off, like the heavy bag. Like everybody knows the heavy bag. Heavy bags are awesome because they're chained at the top, which means you have a lot of motion on the bottom, um, which is good because as you're moving around, being able to kick stuff, it has different angles, which gives you different angles for kicks. But then you can also punch a target that's not going to move too crazy much. But that's really depending on the weight. Weight sizes, you can get anywhere between like, I think 50 to 200 pounds. I could be wrong. Uh, correct me on that if I'm wrong. But the heavy bag is just kind of like a go-to. Elbows, knees, I guess you could headbutt it if you are a psychopath. <laughs> if there is a punching bag that I would recommend first, before anything else, it would be the heavy bag. Let me see if I can think of any downsides of a heavy bag. Um, it, moving at the bottom makes it a little bit different for punches. I think that different places of attachment are good for different strikes that you're throwing. I mean, for the most part, you're not really going to go wrong with a heavy bag. A heavy bag can be too light and you can use it the wrong way where like you see those people pushing it and just trying to make it go super far. The idea of a heavy bag, in my opinion, is that you want to like dent it. You want it to not move very much, but you want to like really sink into it. That's my opinion. You know, obviously I'm going to rep the Hayabusa bag because, you know, Hayabusa ambassador here. But yeah, universally, one of the most important bags, if not the most important type of punching material that you're going to find. Uh, let's move on to, we're going to go from linked up top to linked on the bottom. Like the Wave Master is a great example. I've punched so many Wave Masters in my life. Usually you'll find these more in karate schools or uh, the occasional Taekwondo school. Now, first and foremost, let's talk about the con of a freestanding bag. It falls over. Like, as much as the heavy bag moves, the freestanding bag falls over pretty regularly. Not as regularly as some of the other ones. They're usually filled with sand or water in the bottom, so you can kind of dictate how easy it falls over. You could, like, easily be one of those guys on Instagram that, like, fills it with two pounds and is like, hoopa, two-inch punch, and then it's like, poof. Like, those things fly over. Poof. But they're still super useful. Like, they're obviously easier to set up and move than a heavy bag would be. So if you've got, like, a nice outside space and nowhere to hang stuff up, Freestanding bag's pretty cool because you can just kind of bring it out, knock it around a little bit. Um, punching is a little bit annoying because you have that little base on the bottom. So you can't really get too close to it all the time, or at least not as close as you'd like to get, without having your feet be like this much further away than they could be. Freestanding bags have this plastic circular like tube, uh, this cylinder on the inside, and then on the outside it's filled with uh, usually like foam padding. Um, that can rot away after a while. It can start to disintegrate. Rot. I feel like rot's not the right word. It's not going to like become disgusting in there. But in time, it does start to like degenerate a little bit. However, super fun to jump over this. And the cool part about those is that you also have the little stout boys. Stout boys are really kind of only useful if you are a child. And even if for children, they're not really super useful because literally half of the bag is this like three foot tall plastic base that you're supposed to put the sand into. It takes up like half the height of the whole thing. What's the purpose? Like if you're gonna have it designed for the height of children, why would you make half of it unpunchable and kickable? Anyway, um, yeah, pretty much these are super useful for like bottle tricks. And, and that's... I mean, that's not it, obviously, but they're kind of like, they're just the midsection. So if you're an adult, I wouldn't recommend buying it. We'll hit up one more Century freestanding product, and that's the Century Versus. It's like designed to be the to-go punching bag. That's, that's how I used to use it, at least. I used to own one. I used to bring it to like homeschool co-ops, daycares, parks and rec, plop it in place and let the kids beat it up. Um, if you're an adult, this thing flies around like a Nerf dart at a birthday party. So like if you punch it one good time, it's just boom, just immediate, immediate boom. Now, with that being said, it does have handles on top. So if you're doing partner work and somebody holds it while the other person punches it, then you could be onto something. Um, kicking it, it feels cool. It's an actually pretty cool product, I'm not gonna lie. 
not as hardcore and designed for like really just wailing on it as like a heavy bag would be or even a freestanding bag would be, but still pretty useful overall. Now, which to go now? Um, let's go into... Alright, let's do this next because I know you're probably thinking, Seth, what is the thing that's doing the YMCA dance? What is the robot that looks like a skinny version of the Mortal Kombat villain? Um, this is the Strike RX-1. Now, I have not used this. Disclaimer. However, my boy Coach Micah has used it and I've seen tons of video of him using it. Pretty much those arms swing at you and you can like work on head movement and counters. Oh my god, I want this thing so bad. It's got like different modes too, so it's got a little computer inside. So it's like, uh, beat your butt, absolutely. You can work on head movement. It's got an actual head and then I think you can get a version that has a torso too. So you can be like doing pull counters. Oh, I should not move too much. But you can move a decent amount. You can like check stuff, block stuff, return. You can set it to different formats like sparring or like set combos and stuff like that. It's pretty cool looking, I'm not gonna lie. I want one pretty bad. I reached out to them a long, long time ago. They're supposed to let me use one soon, so that could be cool. I'll be able to have more information for you guys then. They're still a young company. They've got an Indiegogo out right now where if you buy one, you would get it in September because they're like, literally they make them as you buy them. Now I would call like the heavy bag or the freestanding bags more like overall use items. There's a couple overall use items here. I would call this more of a specialty item where maybe if you already have a heavy bag or something else, or if you already know how to punch and kick like you're not novice, you could go with this. They're super nice people. You can find a link below if that's something that you're interested in. Let's talk about a reflex bag for a second. Now a reflex bag is the one that is just a little head on top and the bendy part is lower down in the bar. So I own one of these. I've got it in my backyard where like I pull it out and I punch with it. It's really cool for head movement. Uh, sort of the same concept, but not really because you know where it's going. Like you can just tell based off pattern. If I punch this way, it's going down and then back up. Fun to play with. If you hit it too hard, same thing, falls over. So it's really kind of more of like a touch, bang, 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 because it, it takes a little bit to get back to you because the bend is at the bottom. Now the Cobra bag, however, which is the one that you'll see right beneath it, has the bend about halfway to a little bit higher. So that swing happens faster. So it's like, dang, 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 dang. It's the one that you see Ryan Garcia use all the time. He's like, pop, 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 pop. I, I can't even move that fast. I would say if you could choose between the reflex bag and the Cobra bag, the reflex bag's usually gonna be a little bit cheaper, but the Cobra bag's gonna be a little more useful. Like, both of them are obviously just boxing applications, right? There's no kicking these bags. I mean, I, I kick the reflex bag every now and then, but the reflex bag's gonna be a little bit cheaper. Um, it's not gonna be as like fast paced. You're not gonna be able to fine tune as well. It's gonna be a little bit slower unless you don't hit it as hard. Cobra bag, once again, a little bit faster because it's like it's it's bending up here, which means it's less space it has to go. Whereas if it was bending down here, it would go all the way down and all the way up because it's so big. Now, next, we're going to talk about this bad boy here, which is the like boxing bar type deal. Pretty much it's a reflex bar if it wasn't allowed to move and that bar swivels around. So if I punch this bar, it's going to go swivel around and it could hit me on the other side. So with this kind of thing, you can go pop, roll, same thing. It's punching oriented. So you can work on blocks, you can work on rolling, you can work on pulling, um, pretty much all the basic mechanics that you're going to need to work on when it comes to striking. You're not going to be able to hit these hard. These are, again, more specialty items. They're not overall use, which you could like touch them, you could wail on them like you could with a heavy bag or a standing bag. Now, the one of these that I would absolutely recommend that, absolutely, I'd recommend you don't get this. These are the ones that you're gonna see in like Dick Sporting Goods and Target. These are the cardio bags that look like they should be a freestanding bag, but they're on the springy thing. They look like a dude that like doesn't lift his legs ever. They're just like this and then, just tiny little bitty rail bottom. These are probably gonna be the least expensive things you find on this list. They're designed for cardio kickboxing, which is like the And the reason being because they're literally only designed to come back to you after you sort of punch them a little bit. Like not a big bottom, but a lot up top, which means, oh, it's gonna fall over. Um, I would not recommend these. I don't really think they're that useful unless you're just going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, a bunch. Now let's get back to the heavy bags. I want to talk about two different types of heavy bags. First off, the aqua bag. The aqua bag is sick if you punch. Pretty much the only way you can use the aqua bag is with gloves and wraps. 
unless you're me, we'll talk about that later. This is really cool because you can go on uppercuts, you can go hooks, there's something satisfying about touching the aqua bag because you can hit it hard and it's a little, in my opinion, it's a little bit easier on your joints, it has a little more give, it's a little bit heavier so you can get some thump behind it. Uh, it's like punching a waterbed, don't know why you would do that. I use this one pretty frequently whenever I'm working on my boxing. Uh, great for uppercuts, great for really digging in hook punches. Doesn't move around very much because of the nature of water, right? It like sloshes, so it doesn't have a consistent weight going one way or the other. It doesn't swing quite as much. You can get a little bit more of like a dum dum, dum dum, dum dum when you're hitting it. Or maybe that's just because I'm a weak little bitty baby boy. But aqua bags are sick. Would recommend. If you're a boxer, you could get away with not having a heavy bag and having one of these in your house. If you're a gym, it'd be like a cool thing that you're gonna have to add to your heavy bags. Unless you're a boxing gym, I guess. You could have a bunch of them. Now, somewhere in between the heavy bag and the aqua bag is like this angled boxing bag where you can work uppercuts to the head, but also there's a body to it and there's a head and it's made out of foam. This one is going to swing around a decent bit more because most of the weight is up top, which is right where the hold is. So the body is going to move more unnaturally than it usually would. Usually a body moves like this. Like from time to time you'll have movements like this, but for the most part feet are going to move as well, which is kind of weird to have a body that like when the head stays in the same spot. Um, but these things are cool. You can really get good uppercuts in them. Um, I've only used one at Icy Mike's place, so he'd be more well equipped to talk to you about it, I guess. A little too specific, in my opinion, to want to buy one personally. You know what I mean? I would rather have an aqua bag or a circle bag that looks like an aqua bag, but it's made of foam. Um, where does that leave us with? Okay, now let's talk about speed bag versus double end bag. So the double end bag is the one that's tied to the ceiling and the floor with elastic stuff in between and it's like a little dome piece. You go bop, 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 bop. Um, Shane Faison and Icy Mike both have some good videos about double end bags. Um, of the bags that are small and noggin shaped, this is probably the one that I've used the least. Um, I mean they're cool, definitely specialty bag. Like. I used to actually have one of these that was a tennis ball. It was really cool for like getting accuracy and timing because it moves so much. Um, very similar to like the reflex bar and stuff like that. However, it's usually gonna have a little more oomph behind it as it comes back. You can work on like really having to go there and there. And instead of going down when it reaches the edges like a reflex bar does, it's gonna stay straight across, which is going to have a different purpose. Doesn't necessarily make it more or less useful. Like when you think about it, bodies do tend to go down on either side like a reflex bar does, but it doesn't like touch the ground like a reflex bar is gonna do. Really cool for working timing, very similar to the speed bag. So the speed bag, in my opinion, kind of worthless. A lot of people are going to disagree. I guess if you're a boxer, it makes sense why you would work on that hand-eye coordination. Makes sense. It's all you do. Punch, right? Um, I wouldn't buy one. It's just me. I, I, I wouldn't buy one. Uh, I don't think it's that cardiovascularly draining. I think it's really good for like developing the muscles in your shoulder, right? Because if keeping your arms up there for a prolonged period of time, it's going to be draining. They're literally elevated higher than they'd usually be, and you're punching. I mean, I guess that's a, that's a pretty good reason to do it right there, but I'm kind of iffy on it. Really, really, really good high-level boxers find a way to use this really well. You could do that with any of these, though. Like, literally, you could do that with any of them. Really, really high-level boxers could also really make a makiwara work, which can be the next thing we talk about. Okay, so a makiwara is not a punching bag. This is obvious. It's a piece of wood that has little ropes tied around it. I've used them small amounts, but more so I've used other things as a makiwara, which isn't technically how words work. Anyway, what I'm saying is that I use an aqua bag on a pretty regular basis to kind of like toughen up the skin around my hand. Um, not as firm and hard, and then also I'll just like very lightly touch on walls every now and then, as every random person who does martial arts does, I feel like. These are usually something that you build, and I really want to build one, actually. So maybe that would be a fun video, building a Makiwara. Last two things we haven't talked about yet. First one is going to be the bob. The bob is very interesting. If you have never punched a bob, it's way harder than you'd expect. But not like the body and the head itself. The head is very, like, move aroundable. I'm talking about the outside. Like, if you hit the outside hard with skin, especially the top of the foot, 
it sucks. It hurts really, really bad. Um, and I've kicked bags for a long time. Like I've kicked a lot of different things. It's like on the same level as if you kicked an aqua bag. If you've ever kicked an aqua bag, you've only done it once. You've only done it once. Um, bobs are pretty close to on that level. But the concept of the bob is one of the coolest. Like having a noggin, having like actual targets to try and hit, right? Bang, bang. Um, in my opinion, Bob's actually a little bit more self-defense based with the way he's standing, sorta. Like he's not in a fighting stance. I wish they'd make a Bob in a fighting stance. I feel like that'd be pretty sick. Or at least like one that was angled a little bit more where the head was facing you and the body was turned a little bit more. Anyway, um, Bob's cool. Bob doesn't fall over as much as you'd think. Weight on top is like not that crazy. You can knock it over, but it's not gonna fall over as easy because you're not gonna like put as much thump into it. You're more so looking for those targets. Like there's something a little bit more satisfying about punching the Bob in the face. And I guess the reason I'm saying it hurts more on your skin is because usually when I hit the Bob, I go no gloves because it feels more satisfying to know, okay, that knuckle touched that point. That knuckle touched that point. That knuckle touched that point. My foot touched there, you know, whatever it is. I like to try and go overhands where I clip the jaw. They're really good for being accurate. Bobs don't move at all. And the way they stand is like super, like you're beating up somebody who absolutely didn't deserve it. <laughs> and really, actually, now that I think about it, there's not a lot on here that are designed for you to kick. Freestanding bags, heavy bags, that's pretty much it. The last one we're going to talk about is this wall-mounted bag. The only place I've used this wall-mounted bag has been at Upstate Karate. Upstate Karate has one. It's pretty much a little bulge that comes out and then a flat body. So you can work uppercuts, hooks. Um, you can work overhands from time to time. You can step off and hit that little angle up top. Bink! Um, these things are cool. I don't know where I would put them height-wise because like some of it, like an uppercut would be too low if the overhand was in the right position. I, I'm not sure about that. But I think that if you were punching stuff, it's really cool, you can connect it to the wall. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna take up a lot of space. Yeah, and that is pretty much every type of heavy bag. Once again, if you wanna take a further look at any of those, you can find all of them in a the link below. If you want more advice on stuff like this, but different, like shields or mitts or I don't know, you think of something else maybe? Make sure you leave it in the comment below. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Peace.